This is Twit. Um, this isn't this isn't a sad obituary. Well, it sort of is. Um, I wanted to mention Francis E. Allen. Yeah. Not well known. Uh, unless you're a language, you're a coder like Lexi or you're a language fan. But her story is really remarkable. She was born on a farm without running water in Peru, New York, 88 uh, days ago. She died August 4th on her 88th birthday, so 88 plus a few days ago. Uh, years ago, I should say, not days. 88 years ago. Uh, she wanted to be a teacher. She graduated from uh, the New York State College for Teachers. It's now SUNY Albany. She was up there in Upper New York State. She got a bachelor's in mathematics in 1954, began teaching math in school back in Peru, New York. Uh, two years later, she decided, I like math. She wanted to get an MS in math. She went to the University of Michigan, earned her master's in 1957, but was kind of crippled, as many uh, many of us are, with student loans. So she said, you know, before I go back to teach, because that was her first love, I'm going to get a quick job, make some money at IBM Research in Poughkeepsie as a programmer. This is back in 1957. She never left 45 years later. She ended her career at IBM when she retired. She taught incoming employees Fortran. Um, she retired in 2002, was still a fellow emerita. She became an IBM fellow, which is the highest award uh, IBM can give you, and won the Turing Award, the highest award computer science can give you, because she was a pioneer in compilers, compiler organization and optimization algorithms. She made contributions that have changed the way software is made even to this day. Her work on interprocedural analysis and automatic parallelization is currently the leading edge of compiler research, even though she did that work in the 60s and 70s. Um, an amazing person. And I want to acknowledge her because I don't think she's well known in the to the general public, even to the technical public. She's probably well known to anybody who's ever designed a compiler or learned about how compilers work. She was the first female IBM fellow, the first female winner of the Turing Award, a fellow of the IEEE and the ACM. They even created the IEEE Francis E. Allen Medal in her honor. Passed away uh, of Alzheimer's at the age of 88 this week. And I'm, I, I think it's so important. She was, uh, through the rest of her life, an advocate for women in STEM and women in coding and uh, God knows we desperately need more diversity um, in the software and hardware that we use every day because, you know, if it's got only the point of view of a bunch of white guys, <laughs> it's just not going to be the software we want, the software we need, the software we deserve. So well, uh, yeah. we should remember Francis E. Allen. Go ahead. There, there's something there that I, I think everyone needs to remember, and that is today – we take it for granted that you can have a compiler. Yeah, there's several different types of compilers. There's ways to organize your code. But there had to be someone who started with the idea that there's a more efficient way to program a computer than flipping switches. There's, there's, a, there's a shared language that we can create that will help us organize our thoughts into something that can actually be run through a computational machine. Yeah. The first person to do that had to be visionary. Uh, I mean, now we know it's possible. It's like it's like the first time that you go into space. That's when you have to be visionary. After that, you're duplicating. You're you're trying to en enhance, but that first effort out the door needs to get so much recognition because it laid the foundation for everything. Everything that came after. Yeah, uh, it's the thing that turns something sort of human readable into something the machine can mm -hmm. act upon. Lexi, I'm sure, knows it. What languages did you code in? Oh, lots of things. C, C++. Okay. Both uh, use compilers. Java. Yep. Yeah, yep. I mean, you know. Wait, wait. But what did you learn on? What did they make you learn when you started? C. C is the oh, most dude. beautiful. I love C. Yeah, no, I loved it. That's you why can, I was this like, oh, Ker this Kernahan and Ritchie, the, the, the C programming language is this thick. It was the first language, the first real language I learned. I learned basic, of course, but the first real language I learned was C. And to this day, I consider it elegant, 
beautiful, a real masterpiece. Of course, they started me with Fortran and oh, Pascal. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I learned Pascal because I had to in the early days of the Macintosh. That's how you coded Hated it. it. Pascal is kind of a nightmare. C just feels natural and beautiful. Yeah. Of course, it has plenty of pitfalls. <laughs> and a lot of the bugs and exploits we get in code today really goes back to that idea that we're going to make a language so powerful that the programmer can dig a hole for herself and right. fall right into it. Like, like Steve yeah. Gibson. <laughs> Nobody but Steve. Steve Gibbs <laughs> is the last guy writing somewhere. <laughs> C is, I, C I is a, very close to the metal. Yeah, I have respect for anyone who can write high level in assembly. You and know, that's just, that's, uh, as somebody, I wrote a lot of assembly code early on because I hated Pascal so much. I ended up writing a 68,000 assembler <laughs> for the uh, Mac. And it was actually <laughs> easier than Pascal. What happens, and I guarantee you it's what's happened with Steve, is as you do it, you eventually you start writing macros. And in effect, uh -huh. you create your own high level language. Yeah. So you're writing in a language that is much more fluent than typing, you know, move. Six, two, four. And, well, know, if if you're proficient in assembly, you've essentially created your own compiler because you've got a you library the, of, of. You're the compiler. Over over. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're the compiler. Uh, yeah, I I actually loved writing sixty eight thousand assembler because it was it has a flat memory model. It was very straightforward and a very logical instruction set. And then I s took a look at the eighty eighty six. Yeah. And I said, I'm never writing assembly code for this thing. It's a nightmare. 